Good morning and Merry Christmas. Of course, this is not the Christmas that we had hoped for after two years of COVID. We had hoped to be, to be able to be together for both Christmas Eve and Christmas morning, but unfortunately, Mother Nature has had other plans for us this year. So coming to you from my home, I decided to bring you a bit of a gift and uh, bring a very modified service to you. If you have been joining us throughout the Advent season and Christmas Eve last night, you know that we have had guests throughout the season. And so I'd like to bring you today's guest as well. So if you'd like to join me, let us worship together and let us begin in prayer. Let us pray. God of wisdom and wonder, you stir in our hearts and bring us joy. You stir in our minds and bring us insight. You stir in the world and bring hope to lives who welcome you. In Jesus, you came as a little child, stirring up our love. So now we come to adore you with the angels, to bow in welcome with the shepherds, to kneel in wonder with the Magi, to ponder your mystery with Joseph, to love and cherish you with Mary. We come to you with humble hearts full of joy because you came to us first and stay with us always, wise and wonderful God. God of the highest heaven and the humble manger, we gather together throughout space and time on this Christmas day with glad hearts. Familiar songs lift our spirits, familiar faces bring a smile to our lips, yet we confess our Christmas joy often doesn't last. Worries cast a shadow over the manger, business as usual waits outside the stable door. Forgive us when we rush through Christmas and miss the gift of peace you offer us in the Christ child, in whose name we pray, amen. The very name Jesus declares that God saves us. So hear the good news this Christmas morn. In Jesus, God comes to us to free us from all that harms us. May the peace of Christ, born at Christmas, be with you this day and throughout the coming year. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Luke chapter 2. We're reading verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our guest this morning is Jesus. From the infinite to a few cells within the womb of Mary, I left my father, Abba, to live on earth. After months within her womb, warm, protected, and moving with her every move, I felt the contractions that would expel me out into the world. Suddenly I was cold, exposed, and I felt rough hands on my body. Then slightly gentler hands wrapped me in something soft before I was gathered close to the breast of my mother, Mary. As I opened my eyes, I gazed directly into hers, and what I saw there was love, pure, simple, complete love. When she spoke softly to me, I recognized her voice as the one I'd heard most over the last nine months. Then I was passed over to my stepfather, Joseph, and I felt his rougher hands. But as I looked into his face, there too I saw love, simple, pure, and complete. I was handed back to my mother, and we sat cuddled together as a family before they finally laid me on straw in a manger. It scratched and it wasn't nearly as warm and comfortable as my mother's or my stepfather's arms. But we slept until suddenly we had visitors, strange visitors in the middle of the night. They smelt like the fields. They were the shepherds that the angels had visited. Poor, marginalized outcasts. They were our first visitors after my arrival. It was amazing to see them, to be there with them because there was joy, amazement, and awe in their eyes and in their voices. My first guests, the folks that many would never have into their homes. Yes, the hay was rough and I slept to the sound of animals. But I felt warm, safe, and loved. But I came into a world that was filled with conflict, war, disease, anger, hatred, and loneliness. You may think that the world that you live in is filled with horrible events and situations like the war in the Ukraine, mass murders, children being murderers, homelessness all around you, people going hungry, even dying of starvation, some dying in the streets of exposure and hypothermia. There's a lack of adequate medical care for many. Pandemics, loneliness. It's a hard world. 
It's a hard world for you to live in. But really, the world hasn't changed since I was born into it. When I was born, a terrible monarch threatened my birth. Actually, was threatened by my birth. And because of that, he murdered all the infant boys. There were many who were poor, marginalized, and without adequate health care, whom I ate with, taught to, and healed throughout my life. I know this world from beginning to end. I know how people can be. I know the evil that exists. And that's why I came to this earth. I came knowing that humanity needed me. I came knowing that humanity needed to know this love. I came knowing that in small ways and large that I would change the world. Love. Simple, pure, complete love can change the world. As my followers, you know that you are loved with all of my heart, with all of Abba's heart, and that I am always with you to the end of the age. But there are many who don't know this love, who don't know how much my father and I love all of the earth, all of humanity. And so as I share my love with you, I ask that you turn around and go out into this world and share this love with others. I am Emmanuel, God with you. I pray that you will share this love with all around you so that no one will ever be lonely again. No one will ever suffer disease without someone holding their hand. That no one will ever go hungry. That no one will ever die in the streets. My love is with you always, to the very end of the age. I love you, my child. Let us once again come before God in prayer. Let us pray. God of beginnings and endings, God of the eternal word made flesh in Christ Jesus, we give you thanks for the gifts that Christmas renews in us each year. The hope that as another year ends, something new will yet be born in us and for us. The trust that even in the longest nights, stars promise your light will continue to shine. The truth that even what grows old can be made new when love is born again in us and for us. As you came to us in love as the Christ child in Bethlehem, so we come to you in love and concern for this world. In this time of prayerful expectation, we remember families who are living close to the edge of survival in these challenging times, worrying about how to feed their children and what to expect in the year ahead.
We remember those who will spend Christmas alone, in hospital, in grief, or loneliness. We remember those who work today while we celebrate or relax. We remember those who have lost their sense of joy and wonder, filled with cynicism or despair. We remember those who will face the year ahead with fear and anxiety because their lives are filled with violence, upheaval, or unwelcome changes. We remember those who celebrate the birth of a new life, a new love, or a new way of being. And we remember, we remember those whom we have loved and who love us, who now dwell in the eternal joy of your presence, giving thanks for all they mean to us still. With both joy and concern in our hearts, we gather our prayers together, lifting them all in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. From my home to yours, I wish you a wonderful, happy, healthy, loving, joy-filled, peaceful Christmas. Rejoice this day that Christ is born for us, lived as one of us, died for our sake, and is risen to walk beside us through whatever the future holds. So may the tenderness of God enfold you, the promise of Christ uphold you, and the strength of the Spirit lead you on to greet the year ahead filled with grace and truth. Amen. <laughs>